K. Chopra. He is the organizing chairman of WCCPCI 2016 and the chief of cardiology at Mulchan Medicity, New Delhi. He has been the president CSI of 2015 and the president Indian Academy of Ecocardiography in 2017. This evening, for the next uh, 17 minutes, Dr. Chopra would be speaking on rivaroxaban, the most promising NOAC in stroke prevention in non-valvular atrial fibrillation. To chair the proceedings of this opening session, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Naveen C. Nanda, Dr. Zakesh Sharma, Pavan Sharma, P.C. Manodia, Jagat Narula, Poonam Malhotra, Amrish Agarwal, J.J.S. Ruiz, and Sanjeev Jha. Ladies and gentlemen, as this is a keynote address, we will not be having any questions from the floor. As soon as Dr. Chopra completes the address, we'll just have a quick comment from the chair. It's over to the chairman. And uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, fellow colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the topic given to me is Rivaroxaban, the most promising NOAC in stroke prevention, challenges in India and the real world. I remember the words of Eugene Brownwald always. I worship him like a god of medicine and god of cardiology who believes in prolonging lives and escaping death. We all know the main agenda of my presentation is why, where, and when to recommend preventive strategies and NOAC in non at, uh, non uh, valvular atrial fibrillation and prevention of embolic syndrome is my main agenda. The data of stroke is known to all of us. CVD is rising steeply in our country. 100% rise in mortality as expressed by WHO. The data is very well known. See the data. Ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, despite intervention, rising steeply. CVD mortality is very, very high. The stroke mortality is very, very high. And see the data. The estimated percentage of deaths is rising as by WHO. And see the data which is showing that CVD mortality is premature and which is happening to a very fast pace. You see the projections. The projections are that the mortality is going to rise to almost 72.5% by the year 2030. And the data is that the CVD stroke and death is going to rise if no action is taken in time. Hypertension scenario, we discussed many times, is a silent killer, 40 to 50 percent. 70 percent are hypertensive at the age of 70, 80 percent are hypertensive at the age of 80. And this is one of the very common cause of premature mortality and atrial fibrillation. See the data by Chug in circulation, published of atrial fibrillation. The commonest cause is hypertension, 2 percent at the age of 40 and 4 percent at the age of 50 and almost 8 percent at the age of 70 and 10% at the age of 80, with so many interventions happening, the LA size and the LA volume determines the prevalence of hypertension. And see the data, very clear. 91% of the atrial fibrillation happens in people who have underlying hypertension, underlying heart failure, underlying vascular insult, and 50% AF deaths are related to stroke. And 14 crore AF patients are there worldwide. See the data published in 2014. And see the data here. The global AF burden, age and sex adjusted, more common in males as compared to females. And see here the mortality and the global age adjusted mortality in AF rising steeply right from 1990 to 2010. And the data is very clear that in developed countries, male is dominant, while in developing countries, female are dominant. Asian burden, very, very clear. The graph is showing very clear. Asia is rising in 2015. AF is going to be a real problem. We have to ready to handle this issue. This is the ethnicity. We find the whites and the Asians are highly prevalent. And the data which shows very clearly that Asians are on a high risk for AF and stroke. If you see the CHAD score or a CHAD 2, DS2 or vascular score, the the mortality and the significance is very, very high with atrial fibrillation. Once upon a time, we thought of warfarin. Asians were given warfarin, and the data is very clear that intracranial hemorrhage is very, very high. We see here the data classification of atrial fibrillation known to all of us. I won't waste much time. And uh, how to classify the various oral anticoagulants is also known to you. There was VKA or factor 10A antagonist or direct thrombin inhibitors. All are important. But which is more important? There's a big debate. 
which agent to use, when to use, how to use, and how long to be used is a real challenge. Methods of diagnosis like EKG or Holter or ECHO, and I think it's very important modality out of all which we see is the Doppler and ECHO, whether conventional Doppler or TDI or 3D ECHO or 2D ECHO speckle tracking or strain rate, and most important out of them is LAVI, left atrial volume index, which is very, very important. We can see three dimension of LV and measure the volumes. Huge data to show that the morbidity and the mortality can be predicted based on the LA volume. And it has been shown not only AF, but the heart failure data. This data was published in Indian Heart Journal by our group, and we have shown 30% have LV diastole dysfunction who have a large left atrial volume index. ELR is a timely detection of PAF, very, very important uh, investigational tool. Opportunistic screening, we can see the level of uh, evidence here. And we see here the stroke stop study, which has shown very clearly 12% of AF can be detected. Three are new cases just by screening technique. 33% on intermittent screening. And 90% of patients were diagnosed where AF, and they require optimization of oral anticoagulants. See here the mass screening, which can increase the need of oral anticoagulants. And see here the risk of stroke, very clear. I don't know the reason. 90% of patients of AF have stroke. Only 10% have a stroke other than brain stroke. Maybe a peripheral, arterial, or mesenteric, or any vessel. And the stroke is the most serious complication of AF and is most disabling. In atrial fibrillation, stroke leads to 25% deaths and 52% disability. See the data of disability, very, very painful. And we are really helpless at time to see the disabled patient, and we cannot do much. One year after stroke, the cost is almost 5 lakhs rupees. One year after stroke. And see, SPAF is therefore mandatory. Stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation is the need of the hour. Unfortunately, the awakening happens when the stroke has occurred. We should prevent the stroke. That's the message of my presentation today. Recommendation for prevention of thromboembolism patients. I think the level of evidence is very clear. It is the CHAT score, which is very, very important. We take the level of evidence. And balancing of the risk by stroke and bleeding. Lesser the score, lesser the risk, I think is the message. What are the major challenges in SPAF? Very, very important point to discuss today. A very simple way to explain. It is the LA and the LA appendage where a decorated elephant is there like a storm sitting inside, not harming at times, but the way when it dislodge, it creates a storm which cannot be prevented. Strict uh, risk of stroke is underestimated based on chat score. Active data is very sh shown very clearly that the high bleeding rates are seen with the dual antiplatelets, anticoagulants. Warfarin, once upon a time, was a preferred option for SPAF. And 74% of risk reduction by adjusted dose of warfarin is compared to aspirin and low-dose uh, clopidogrel. Warfarin reduces stroke, was mentioned in 2007. And many challenges are there today for VK antagonist. The frequent monitoring of INR is required. And INR less than 2, stroke vulnerability, more than 3, hemorrhage personality. It's very important. Just a level of 1, we may create a hemorrhage or you can create a further stroke. So VKA has a very poor compliance. This is not my data. This is the data published in 2010, and the non-compliance rate is 58% in one year and 76% in second year. Poorly controlled INR with warfarin is worse than no treatment. Very important message. It is better not to treat with warfarin rather than creating complications of warfarin. So VK therapy has limitations because the response is unpredictable, poor compliance, poor adherence, routine coagulation monitoring is required, intracranial bleeding, frequent dose adjustment, numerous fruit and drug interaction, and very narrow therapeutic window and slow onset of action and a high morbidity and mortality. So what's an ideal oral anticoagulant today? Which is the highest or longest bioavailability? Single dose, good compliance, no drug interaction, good adherence, useful combination, no monitoring, cost-effective, of course, and safe and promising. So role of all anticoagulants, this is the algorithm mentioned very clearly in the European Heart Journal, which we really follow in all our patients, 
and the NOAC today is preferable as compared to Vita K antagonist. A historical view, if you see, in 1954 was Warfarin, in 2009 by Rolai data, Arvarak Saban by Rocket F data in 2010, Apexiban by Aristotle data, and Induxaban in 2013 by Engage. If I compare all these anticoagulants, which are novel or no new anticoagulants, the River Exaban is a 10A antagonist, highest bioavailability as compared to Debigatron or Apexaban or Reduxaban, and the protein binding is highest. It has a dual excretion, and there are no evidence of any ACS. Debigatron has a higher prevalence of ACS. So our patient population is mostly beyond 65 or 70, where there is a more ACS and AMI. This is a very, very important thing to keep in mind. See the data of rocket trial. This is almost done in 1178 sites, 14,000 patients, 45 countries. And see the difference. The endpoints were principal safety endpoint and the primary efficacy endpoints. They all favor Rivaraxaban and not warfarin. Intracranial hemorrhage, lower in Rivaraxaban. Fatal bleeding, lower in Rivaraxaban. There was a little suspicion and we were all the time scratching our head that GI bleed was slightly more as compared to warfarin. And the latest data shows even the GI bleeding is also less. Rocket AF has given a very clear-cut data so far as the mortality is concerned and MI events is concerned. Rivaraxaban is better as compared to superiority. And you see here the data. Rivaraxaban is the only NOAC having single dose with minimal dose adjustment. It's a very, very excellent data. See the parameter of efficacy comparison. And if you see a rocket AF trial, superior as compared to RELI or Aristotle. Debigatron, higher prevalence and higher risk of EC events. Every one of you is aware. We should be very, very careful in using this. Management of bleeding and NOAC. I think I won't waste much time on this. How to switch from VKA to non Oral and non-oral intercoagulants is very, very important to understand. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Xenthas data recently published have shown very clearly that the overall embolic phenomena is lower with the Revorexaban. Major bleeds are lower and the GI bleed is only 0.8%. So we should not have any fear in our mind of a GI bleed. I think the selection of patient in the subsets, there was an issue. The global trend of usage of NOAC in SPAF has shown very clearly it improves compliance and improves adherence. The pinnacle registry data published recently in 2015 have shown Rivaraxaban usage has increased by 24% as compared to DTI, direct thrombin inhibitors. So pinnacle registry data is favoring Rivaraxaban. Overuse of NOAC has increased globally and Rivaraxaban usage is more prevalent then NOAC and NVAF. EAC guidelines are very clear that agent is the first choice in NVAF as in uh, child score is more than two. So what's the message? The message is very clear that the river exaban has no pill load, no bill load, no bill load as compared to the disability load. If you compare to the disability, the load of finance is hardly any. No monitoring load, no non-compliance load, no non adherence load no non-safety load, and no non-efficacy load. And it improves the mortality and morbidity. What else we want? We have to be very deciphered by all the data available right from 2010 to 2015. The promise and power of a Rivaraxaban cannot be challenged, whether we use it a prophylaxis before TKR or before THR, stroke prevention, for in treatment of DVT and pulmonary embolism. My two colleagues are here from uh, Kolkata. They will be talking about this in detail tomorrow. Non-central thromboembolism, Rivaraxaban is a drug of choice. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, Rivaraxaban is the most powerful and, pranic, and promising NOAC for SPAF. Rivaraxaban has the highest bioavailability of 100% and 95% of protein binding. Single dose, no food and no drug interaction, no significant hemorrhagic complication. We should not have any fear of using this. No or minimal GI bleed. Morbidity and mortality benefits are enormous. Significantly reduce MI events as compared to Debigatron. Very important legal and ethical issue. 
What is the take home message? The message is health of millions is at stake with a rising menace of stroke in atrial fibrillation of non valvular in origin. Timely intervention with no walk in NVAF is the need of the hour. Rivaraxaban is very safe, not safe, very safe, effective, useful NOAC today. Time to reflect the promise and power of Rivaraxaban is now. It took almost four to five years. Act locally and impact globally. I think our pioneers are, who did a lot of work on this needs to be really praised. Keith Fox and Kennedy Murphy from USA who did a lot of work on this. Ladies and gentlemen, the elephant is walking out of LA and LA appendix if you use the river exaban. Timely intervention is the need of the hour. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful deliberation. Everybody will like that NOAC is uh, one of the drug of choice for atrial fibrillation as on today in a country like ours, who is an impact for diastolic heart failure. It non valvular atrial fibrillations, and Dr. Chopra has greatly delivered his talk, emphasizing of role of non newer oral anticoagulants in prevention of atrial fibrillations. Can I have our comments from my co colleagues? Can I request Dr. Samin to say a few words? No, I think the, clearly, um, at present, the warfarin is used only in a minority of patients in the uh, USA, as pointed out, and clearly. Uh, River Axaban is getting a big momentum. Absolutely. Sir, um, Dr. Chopra, as we know, is a great organizer, and we are all here because of him. And I'm sure some surgeon colleagues sitting here and with me as a cardiac critical care person who sees so much of surgery on the LA appendage, his analogy of the embolus in the LA appendage to an elephant was very timely at the need of the hour. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Can, can I call upon Dr. Naveen C. Nanda, Dr. Jagat, and uh, Dr. Samin, please be on the front. I'd like to present a scroll to Dr. Chopra for his excellent deliberation. Can we get a scroll? Please come in. The rest of the people, please come in front. Stand along with us. Let's give a big hand to Dr. Chopra for his excellent organization as well as great delivery for our non -oral, newer oral anticoagulants. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, Dr. Everybody. Chopra. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Uh,